What's up? I'm back. Got my sunglasses on. It's hot as hell outside. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, audio outside because uh, my next door neighbor is uh, cutting some grass. Otherwise, I would go outside so you can see some light on camera. But uh, we'll have to wait until he uh, is done cutting the grass. Every two weeks, he loves to cut the grass. You know, keep it nice and neat. You know. You may think that guys in the hood just sit on the porch and smoke weed. Not this guy. This guy's a family man. You know, he takes great pride in where he lives. You know, doesn't focus on the bullshit and the small talk. You know, takes care of his family. Stays on, you know, stays on his P's and Q's. That's the type of black man Ringle TV Raw would actually like. I actually, tell you the truth, Ringle TV Raw would probably like this guy a hell of a lot more than me because I'm an asshole and... I'm not saying I'm a huge fan of Smash and Dash, but uh, Smash and Dash does have its advantages and disadvantages. But Ringo would love the guy next door. He's more of a family man. But we'll get to a video about family man versus Smash and Dash. Don't worry, that, that YouTube video will come and I will explain, you know, what is the issue with that. But this video today, however, is a very special YouTube video because I just love to get on these punk-ass pickup artists and dating coaches. Because I feel like there's a lot that they don't tell you in these two-hour, three-hour, four-hour pickup artist seminars. They leave stuff out intentionally on purpose because all they're all about is your money. They don't really care about you as a person or as a human being because if they did... Um, they would help you not just get laid um, 10 times over. They would actually help you, uh, they actually would help you uh, um, succeed in life and help you find better jobs, better careers. Pickup artists and a dating coach um, can't do that. So I thought maybe we might try come out here, you know, until he at least cuts, gets done with the grass. See? Out here. All right. This one's going to be called Sex Game. What's your number and last name two? Now I'm gonna add in the last name because in part one of what's your number, that means from a scale of from one to 10, where's your number? The more higher your number is, the more physically sexually attractive you are to women. Black women, white women, Latino women, Asian women, Indian women, Middle Eastern women, you know, women in general, okay? But there is something that no one really talks about on YouTube, and that is your last name. How can you tell if your last name can determine at birth if you're an alpha male or in a beta male? See, nobody on YouTube talks this type of content. You know, Ringo TV Raw is a very great YouTuber, but I don't see him on YouTube talking about does your last name determine if you're alpha or beta? And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because E-Man67 was upset with Ringo about a month ago for attacking black men about um, who is responsible for creating Man Man and Pookie and, you know, all these, you know, all these archetypes in the black community. Like I said, I will make a YouTube video in the future of Family Man versus Smash and Dash because it's caused a big ripped on YouTube and then I'm gonna make another YouTube video that has absolutely nothing to do with these titles. I've noticed O'Shea Duke Jackson and uh another gentleman, Don Sharpener, um it seems like they're going head to head in these videos. Like they're not mentioning each other's names, they're not insinuating each other in the videos. But I I'm sure O'Shea reads the comments. I'll show Don Sharpener reached the comments. I'm gonna have to make a YouTube video called Jealous Ass YouTubers because uh, that's another thing I see in the manosphere. That's why I never have ever, as an asshole, have never considered myself a part of the manosphere. I never liked it in the first place um, because there were too many personalities, too many people trying to get their hands in the cookie jar, and you could never tell who was real and who was fake in the manosphere. Like, Angry Man, you knew he was a real motherfucker because he just had he just had that conviction about him. He was serious. And when I heard he got betrayed, you know, I, I kind of had a feeling he was going to get stabbed in the back. I didn't know when, but I knew he would get stabbed in the back. I didn't suspect it would be, you know, Ice Cube wannabe, but uh, yeah. 
And then you had the issue with um, Media City and Network. You know, one minute him and one of the Ice Cube are friends. Next minute, stab him in the back. Um, same thing with Steve, the motherfucking Dean Williams. That's what I call Steve, Dean, Dean Williams, when he partners up with Wannabe Ice Cube. Um, I say wannabe because he's wannabe Ice Cube. You know, and, and then they hear what happened to Donovan Sharp. I actually like Donovan Sharp's content. And when he made a video saying that he lied, that he doesn't get paid by Rooch V, I know who Rooch V is. I've seen some of his content. All I gotta say is, Solo TV84, you better grow eyes in the back of your head, okay? Because uh, you be buddy-buddy with Wannabe Ice Cube one too many times and maybe two or three, four years down the road when you ain't paying attention and you blow up real super bigger than what you are on YouTube. Wannabe Ice Cube, you'd be mad and jealous and stab you in the back. That's why Tommy Sotomayor said something that no one can refute. And that is why Tommy is enjoying life and moving to the next level. Wanna be Ice Cube is still in Por Poland, still trying to finish medical school and become a doctor. Well, by the way, Wanna be Ice Cube, why is it taking you such a long time uh, uh, to uh, to finish medical school? I mean, I, I thought you would have been finished a long time ago. Yeah, I'm talking shit. You you did my man Donovan Sharp wrong. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Now on to the video. Now from a scale from one to ten, what number do you rank? If you're a four, you're what they call, if you're a negative one or a negative two, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time getting women's attention. We call one and two, we don't call them one and two in our profession, we call it negative one and negative two. Now, if you're a three and a four we or a five, we call that a working progress, meaning you're going to have to do a whole lot of self-improvement if you want to physically, sexually attract women. Now, if you're a 6, a 6.5, or a 7, you're what they call average at best. You might be below average, or you might be slightly average. Number 7 is you're actually average for physically, sexually attraction. And, um... If you are able to be like an athlete, like if you play basketball, football, baseball, um, you play sports, um, then you're able to um, make yourself more physically, sexually attractive, which brings your value up. You know, you go to the gym, you play sports, that will bring your value up tremendously. Um, if you look like a celebrity, like people say I look like Magic Johnson, five-time NBA champion in professional basketball. Some people, some people say I look like Deion Sanders. So if you look like a celebrity or an athlete, then it brings your points up from 7 to 7.5 to 8. So 8 means great. If you are a 9... That means you are close to having everything. You've got the house, you've got the car, you've got money, you got looks, you got status, you got the hot body, you know how to talk, you got social skills, you're taking women out to lunch and dinner, you're banging and tagging that ass, you're a nine. If you're a ten, then you're the king of the hill. You're the king of the mountain. You reign dominant supreme. When you come through, doesn't matter if it's Beverly Hills, Hollywood, or Hollywood, you are the man. You are the top dog in this bitch. When men see you, they recognize. They give you the nod. You are the man. You know, white guys will drive by in their car and say, Hey man, club Friday night at, at 9 o'clock, be there. Free tickets on me. You command respect. Not demand respect, command respect. There's a big major difference between the two words. You command respect. Um, let me see what else. Um, little kids look up to you like you are a superhero from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, little kids think you're a superhero. Um, women just, when they see you, they just can't wait to be in your presence. You know, when a woman see you, she can't wait to just walk up and show you her ass, her breasts. You know, so 
And then we're going to talk about last names. Now, they don't tell you this in high school and college. And they don't tell you this in the real world. I mean, if they do, there's a few people who do. Your last name is everything, okay? Your last name in this society determines if you're a winner or if you're a loser. It determines if you're an alpha male or if you're in a beta male. This determines if you can get employment or you stay unemployed for the rest of your life, unfortunately. This determines if you can translate a job into a career from being average to being above average. This determines if you can get beautiful women from every region. I'm talking about you can get women from the United States, outside the United States. You can get women as high class, middle class, low class. You can get all 31 flavors of Baskin Robbins ice cream. Yes, damn it, I said it. 31 flavors of Baskin Robbins ice cream. It's actually 32 flavors, but my point is you can get all the flavors of Baskin Robbins ice cream. Call 8100 Bad Boy Effect. Yeah, you heard me. That's 8100 Bad Boy Effect. Now, like I was saying in the video, this determines your sexual V market. This determines what high school you go to, what college you go to. This determines when do you get picked on the basketball team, the football team, the baseball team, the soccer team, when you do track in high school and college. This determines um, when you get your check and how people handle your check. This determines that when you go to a bank... Do people respect you? Do people take you serious? It all goes to your last name at birth. Whatever last name you get, um, you can't change your last name. Like, I'm going to use myself as an example. Alexander Odin. When people think of Odin, they think of me as the king of Asgard. They think of me as Odin's son. So they'll either say Odin, you know, as the father of Thor, or they'll think of me as the mighty Thor. So I'll sometimes get called Thor, I'll get called um, Odin, um, and then when you think of Alexander, that's Greek mythology. If you know your history very well, you'll know that Alexander the Great was uh, a Macedonian Greek warrior who became king and basically conquered the world for 10 years. He conquered e Egypt, he conquered Asia. He went in there and conquered all these great countries. And everywhere he went, he would name himself after all the cities that he had conquered. Now, his reign only lasted for 10 years because he had a lot of people that were jealous of him. So when people hear my name, my name commands respect. Not demand, commands respect. They see power. They see dominance. They see reassurance. They see a guy... That's going to take action and take charge. And ain't full of shit. And is going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not. Whether it hurts your feelings or not. Now let's take another person. Let's take a name, a common name like Billy, right? Let's say that the first name's Billy and then the last name's Billy Nick Nickerson. Oh, people might go Nickerson. They might not even uh, respect this person because it goes by your last name. When people ask how, you know, when people ask me, they always say, man, great. You got two names that's from mythology. You know, how would you get them names? You know, there's a story behind my last name. So potentially, I could be an alpha male. If you get a last name and people just say Bob, Billy Bob, but you put Billy Bob Thornton, oh, now it's a very interesting name because... You, is a story behind his name when he becomes an actor. Now you take Billy Nickerson and he goes through life, high school and college and in the real world being blatantly disrespected by women. Now you take me and I hardly ever get disrespected by women. Now I'm not saying I have never have. I mean I have because I've told you stories on my old YouTube channels, how I always got rejected in high school. Got rejected in high school for four years. And even when it got to my junior and senior year, the only reason why I was getting attention from women was because of my last name. So I thought about myself. I said, if I ever made a part two of what's your number, 
I would probably throw in the last name and add some new bonus material. This is stuff that pickup artists and dating coaches are never going to tell you in two-hour, three-hour, four-hour seminars. Because there's some gutless cowards. At least 90% of them are. So it ain't just what's your number. So, like I said, if you're a negative one or a negative two, you're probably going to end up joining Midtown if you're a negative one or a negative two. If you're a three, a four, and a five, you're what they call a working progress. That means you need a whole lot of self-improvement in all seven to eight categories. Money, looks, status, um, social skills, um, fitness, um, learning how to dress up in clothes, um, learning how to fight. I made a YouTube video. It's called The Fight Game. Learn how to fight. You, you, you got to you know, get a job, you know, get a car, get an apartment, save money. You, you're going to have to learn all seven to eight categories if you're a three, a four, and a five. That's called working progress. If you're a 6, a 6.5, a 7, you're in the category of below average, average, and average at best. So 6 would be below average, 6.5 would be slightly average, and 7 to 7.5 would be average at best. If you play sports and you work out and you look like a basketball player or a football player or a celebrity, then you go up to an 8 to an 8.5. If you're a 9, you're very close to um you're very close to um having everything put together. That means you you're taking women out to lunch and dinner and you bagging and you tagging that ass. Now that doesn't mean that because I said that if you're a three, a four, and a five, that don't mean you don't get sex. That means you're a work in progress. Now, if you're a six, 6.5, a seven, and a 7.5, an eight, and an 8.5, you can get laid. Like, you can. You're just not going to be having sex with women that are supermodels, fitness models, and booty models unless you are an eight to 8.5 you gotta be in my range to uh even make the attempt to try to go after someone of the likings of Scarlett Johansson or Jennifer Lawrence now if you're between a 6 and a 7 to a 7.5 you're eligible to get women that are probably the same level of attraction of you or probably under Meaning fat women, you know, women that, that they ain't nobody really uh, uh, asking out to lunch and dinner. That's what you become eligible for. Negative one and negative two. The reason why I say negative one and negative two is a nice way of saying you're an incel. So that's what negative one and negative two mean. If you're a three, a four, and a five, you're called a work in progress. If you're a six, 6.5, a seven, a 7.5, you do, you're doing pretty okay average at best. If you're an 8 to an 8.5, you look like a celebrity to a lot of people. Now, that don't mean you're not going to get rejected because you are. Every now and then you're going to get rejected because every now and then I get rejected. Sometimes those are good rejections. Sometimes they're bad rejections. Sometimes they're they're both. They're good and they're bad rejections. But you probably going to make a future video about that. And if you're a nine, that means you 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 you're doing very you're doing better than expected. If you're a ten, you're the top dog. You're the king of the hill. You're the king of the mountain. That means you got everyone respecting you, young and old, black or white. Everyone, men, women, children, everyone looks up to you. That's what a ten is. It's like wearing the heavyweight championship belt and professional boxing. I'm not gonna go with professional wrestling because you know wrestling suck right now so i'm gonna go with boxing you're the heavyweight champion of professional boxing so that's what uh 10 is and let's see your last thing yeah your last thing will determine if a woman will marry you and have your last name that will determine that's how you will find out if you're an alpha male or in a beta male that's 
That's a nice way of saying if you're a man or a boy. That's how it goes in the society. Now, the reason why I brought up what is your number and then your last name is because pickup artists and dating coaches, they don't talk about from a scale from 1 to 10. Now, the same system that I'm using for men, you could, you could reverse it, flip it, and turn it around and use all the that I just explained in this video and use the same concept for women. So, the higher your number is, the more physically, sexually attractive you are to a woman. The lower your number is, the less physically, sexually attractive you are to most women. So, that's why I said anything that adds value to your number makes you graduate. Another way to look at it, if this is too complex and too confusing, is high school and college. Remember when the teacher gave you a syllabus? And in the syllabus, um, it stated the rules to get to get an A, right? You know, it started off with, I think it started off with 95 to 100% was an A, but then they changed it to 90. So if it was 90%, you got an A. You got 80%, that was a B. You got 70%, that was a C. And then if you um, got a D, that was 60%. Anything below 50% was a fail. So I think you should think of sexual attraction as a cross between what I just said and the combination of going to school. Because if you really think about it, if you get 90% that in sex and dating, that would actually be a... Uh, that would actually be a... An, uh, that would be an A if you're a 10. If you were a 9 then that would probably be a B. And if you were like an 8 or a 7, you would probably have a B plus to a C plus. And if you were stuck in the, uh, the, 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 the 6 range, you probably would be at a D. And if you were at the, uh, the 3, negative 1, negative 2, and then there's the 3 and the 4 and the 5, you'd probably be between a D minus and a fail. Or some in college would refer to it as a zero. You you didn't do shit. So you would probably look at it from that concept. So yeah. So now some people might say. What about if I get older. Does my number increase? You could use money. You could use status to increase your number. You could go from a five. To a ten. I've heard stories of it. But it's very hard to do because you got to do self-improvement and you got to put in the work. The highest anyone ever gets to is probably a 7 or an 8. 9, it seems like a lot of people crash and burn at 9. So when someone say try to get to 10 out of 10, it's usually hard for them to you know, become the heavyweight champion. Because there's politics, which I'll 